Born in 1863 in Adelsbruck, a quaint village in Norway, Edvard Munch's early life was rooted in a rustic farmhouse. Christian Munch, a medical officer and the son of a priest, was significantly older than his mother, Laura, who had artistic talents that likely influenced Edvard and his sister, Sophie. The family's journey to Oslo in 1864 was spurred by Christian's new role as a medical officer at Akershus Fortress. Tragedy struck early in Munch's life with the death of his mother from tuberculosis in 1868. The subsequent death of his beloved sister, Sophie, a talented young artist, from the same disease compounded the family's sorrows. These losses, interpreted by his father as divine retribution, plunged Christian into a deep spiritual crisis marked by depression and visions. Edvard reflected on his father's impact, stating, My father was temperamentally nervous and obsessively religious, to the point of psychoneurosis. From him I inherited the seeds of madness. The angels of fear, sorrow, and death stood by my side since the day I was born. The Munch family's nomadic lifestyle, necessitated by Christian's military medical career, was marked by financial hardship. Christian's fondness for sharing Edgar Allan Poe's ghost stories and imparting lessons on history and religion instilled a deep-seated anxiety and fascination with death in young Edvard. His fragile health, further compromised by the harsh Nordic winters, often kept him from school, leading him to find solace and expression in drawing and painting. In 1879, Edvard Munch embarked on his studies in engineering at a technical college, showcasing exceptional talents in physics, chemistry and mathematics. Unfortunately, his academic progress was often hindered by frequent illnesses. The subsequent year, defying his father's expectations, Munch left the college with a firm resolve to pursue a career in painting. His decision was met with disdain from his father, who regarded art as an unholy trade. Contrary to his father's strict pietism, Munch embraced a more open-minded approach to art, aspiring to explain life and its meaning to myself, as he expressed in his diary. In the 1880s, Munch was drawn to the Bohemian ideals promoted by anarchist philosopher Hans Jäger, which celebrated free love and challenged societal norms. From a young age, Impressionism significantly influenced Munch. His early forays into various artistic styles, including naturalism and Impressionism, likening some works to those of Monet, Munch eventually concluded that Impressionism lacked the depth for meaningful expression. Urged by Eger to write his life, Munch embarked on a journey of self-reflection and examination documenting his thoughts in what he referred to as his soul's diary. This introspection led to a pivotal shift in his art, with The Sick Child, 1886, inspired by his sister's death, marking his departure from Impressionism towards more emotionally charged and expressive works. Despite facing harsh criticism and moral outrage from the community, Munch persisted, supported by his friend Christian Krogh, who argued that he paints things in a way that is different from that of other artists. He sees only the essential, and that naturally is all he paints. For this reason, Munch's pictures are as a rule not complete, as people are so delighted to discover for themselves. Oh, yes, they are complete. Art is complete, once the artist has really said everything that was on his mind, and this is precisely the advantage Munch has over painters of the other generation, that he really knows how to show us what he has felt, and what has gripped him, and to this he subordinates everything else. His studies in Paris, under Léon Bonner, courtesy of a state fellowship, and exposure to Impressionist and post-Impressionist art, further broadened his horizons. The loss of his father during this period prompted Munch to explore themes of spirituality and symbolism. 
Munch's career took a pivotal turn in 1892 when a solo exhibition in Berlin showcased his work, sparking controversy and acclaim. This exposure catalyzed his career, leading to the creation of the Freeze of Life series, which delves into life, love and death. Iconic works like The Scream and Madonna emerged during this period, embodying Munch's profound exploration of human emotion and existential angst. His experimentation with photography during the late 1890s, though secondary to his main artistic pursuits, added another dimension to his creative expression. A nervous breakdown in 1908, exacerbated by personal losses and a tumultuous lifestyle, led Munch to seek treatment in Copenhagen. The recovery period inspired the Alpha and Omega lithographic series. Returning to Norway, Munch's later works reflected a brighter outlook, characterised by lighter palettes and themes of rural life. Despite a shift away from themes of loss and death, Munch's later self-portraits revisited his contemplations on mortality. Munch's legacy faced a threat during World War II, when the Nazis confiscated his works, labelling them degenerate. However, the majority were eventually rescued and returned to Norway. Munch's life, marred by health issues and the impact of a nearby explosion in his later years, came to a close in Ekeli, near Oslo, at the age of 80. His artistic journey, from the shadows of grief to the light of introspection, remains a testament to his profound impact on art and expression. Edvard Munch's The Sick Child touches on themes of grief, loss, and the fragility of life. Painted in 1885 to 1886, this work is deeply personal, reflecting the trauma of losing his beloved sister to tuberculosis at a young age. Munch revisited this subject several times, indicating its profound impact on his life and art. In The Sick Child, Munch departs from classical representation, instead employing a muted color palette and loose, expressive brushstrokes that convey the emotional weight of the scene. The composition focuses on a young girl, her face ashen and hair fiery red, a stark contrast that highlights her delicate state. Beside her, a figure, possibly her mother, bends in a posture of despair, her face obscured, embodying a universal image of mourning and helplessness. This painting is a significant piece in Munch's body of work as it signals his move towards a more symbolic and expressionistic style. The rough, almost unfinished appearance of the canvas mirrors the theme of life's impermanence and the abruptness of death. The texture of the paintwork itself becomes a metaphor for the emotional turbulence experienced in the presence of illness and the looming spectre of death. The sick child is enveloped in a sense of quiet intensity. The subjects are enveloped in an almost tangible stillness, accentuated by the sparse setting and the absence of unnecessary detail. Munch's use of space and shadow serves not only to focus the viewer's attention on the figures, but also to evoke the suffocating atmosphere of the sick room. Edvard Munch considered his artwork his children, embodying a deeply personal connection to his creations, which he revisited and reinterpreted throughout his career, 
That's why we have several versions of same idea done in different time. Madonna diverges from traditional representations of the figure, typically emphasizing purity and sanctity. Instead, Munk offers a more nuanced, deeply human portrayal, blending elements of life, death, and the eternal, reflective of his interest in exploring emotional and psychological themes. This approach allowed him to examine these motifs from different perspectives, enhancing the expressive use of color, fluid lines, and emotional depth characteristic of his style. In Madonna, we see a figure that is at once vulnerable and powerful, her body gently contorted, her gaze introspective and distant. Munch's use of dark, swirling backgrounds juxtaposed with the luminous, almost ethereal quality of her form creates a dynamic contrast that is both striking and deeply evocative. The painting is enveloped in a sense of mystique and controversy, challenging conventional religious iconography with its sensual undertones and portrayal of the Madonna in a moment of what appears to be ecstasy or transcendence. This bold departure invites profound reflection on the nature of divinity, femininity, and the sacred. Moreover, Madonna embodies Munch's compulsive return to themes of love, anxiety, and existential dread, central to his contribution to symbolism and expressionism. By depicting the Madonna in this unconventional manner, he invites us to reconsider the boundaries between the sacred and the profane, offering a deeply humanized portrayal that resonates with the complexities and contradictions of the human experience. When cholera broke out in Paris in December 1889, Munch moved to St. Cloud, outside the city. There he rented the floor above a café, which commanded a beautiful view of the Seine. If the sick child is a loving tribute to Munch's favorite sister, this painting is a far more complex and darker memorial to the artist's father who had died the previous year. The painting captures a night scene that is both intimate and expansive. The interior space, marked by the cool tones of the blue and green palette, is dimly lit, suggesting the late hours of the evening. The room is sparsely furnished, with just enough detail to suggest domesticity, yet it feels uninhabited, almost ghostly. A single figure is barely discernible, merged with the shadows, enhancing the theme of loneliness and possibly reflective of the artist's state of mind. The light from the outside world casts a cross-like shape into the room, introducing a symbol that could be interpreted as a representation of hope or a burden to bear. This duality of light, as both a physical and symbolic element, adds depth to the composition. The window acts as a portal to the outside, revealing a lamppost that stands as a sentinel in the night. The small distant figures seen through the window contrast with the apparent isolation of the interior space. Munch's work 
often dwells on the theme of isolation and the dichotomy between the inner self and the external world, and this painting is a poignant example of that exploration. In this work, Munch uses the interior as a metaphor for the human psyche, a glass cage suggesting a sense of entrapment. The outside world seems almost unreachable, a separate plane of existence where life continues unbeknownst to the solitary figure within. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me continue creating more content like this. Thank you.